Good morning, everybody. This has been here with the Point by Patrol. Um, it seems like a lot of you probably watched the video where uh, I overheated my Type R on the track over at Carolina Motorsports Park uh, just a week ago. Um, I did order a larger radiator. I'm going to try that uh, before I revert back to the stock intercooler. Um, on the forums, a lot of people had suggested that perhaps uh, there was a significant uh, amount of airflow that had been blocked going through the radiator due to the larger intercooler core. Though there are those out there that are running larger radiator or, uh, intercoolers that aren't running into this issue. And I think some of that had to do with the layout of the track in general. It was a very short track, the straights were short, and there was not a lot of room to cool down um, before you were taking very slow corners uh, and getting back up to speed. So that may have contributed a little bit, but the car in general should be able to handle most tracks as long as um, you're preparing ahead of time and outfitting the vehicle for the track. Since it was my first time there, I really had no idea what I was getting into and the worst thing happened. So I did order a PWR slash CNR radiator from Two Step Performance that I'm going to be installing now. It did just rain yesterday, so it's still kind of gross out here. So I'm going to throw down some blankets on the ground just so that I'm not laying in water. Um, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get started now. So as you can see, the front bumper had to come off again. Um, at this point, I really hate doing it. I'm getting tired of taking it on and off. Um, you can access the, the pet cock down here to drain the coolant, which we're gonna do here in just a second. Make sure that you've got your radiator cap off so that it flows freely. Um, the only reason that we really had to take the uh, front bumper off is because behind the intercooler, there are two 10 millimeter bolts that attach the AC condenser to the bottom of the radiator. Uh, also going to have to more than likely take off this section of crash bar, which you can't do uh, with the front bumper on. Okay, so having never done this before, we've made a few discoveries, some in our favor, some not. Uh, biggest one in our favor so far is we didn't actually have to pull the intercooler out. We were we were kind of worried we had to do that with the Hell Oil Cooler Kit. The, uh, the top bolt down here uh, for the intercooler bracket uh, would have to be removed. In order to do that, I have to take the crash bar off. Didn't want to do that, but you can get to the screws, which would have been there and over there for the, um, for the bottom two on the condenser. It's easy to access the top two here and here just with a 10 millimeter ratchet. We didn't end up having to remove the crash bar here, at least not yet. Um, getting these clips off is kind of a pain, but that was the last thing that we were doing. We were able to unbolt the four bolts that hold in the cooling fan and then kind of pull the fan up. It gave us access to the clips that we couldn't get to otherwise. Uh, it obviously had to remove the upper hose in order to get the fan out, but really the only thing now that's standing in our way is this lower radiator hose and the question of whether we want to remove it from here uh, instead of the engine side or if we want to uh, do the engine side instead. But either way, it's loose and we're gonna keep trucking and see where we get. Okay, so made the most sense to us 
to remove the hose from the uh, engine side. Reason being, didn't want to spill coolant on the ground because I've got pets and I don't want them getting into it. So radiator is out, fan shroud is out. Uh, we're just wiping up a little bit of coolant down here that's dripping out from the thermostat housing. But otherwise, whole thing went pretty smooth. Now we just have to transfer parts from the old radiator to the new radiator. Obviously the hose, fan switch, temp sensor, and put the new one in. And I think what we'll end up doing is about the same in reverse order. We'll put the fan onto the new radiator once it's in the car instead of ahead of time. But this is a fluid situation that could change, especially since we haven't done this before. So any kind of tips or tricks that could prove helpful to any of you will we'll divulge as we go. Okay, we wanted to stop for a second just to show a couple things. This is a 17 millimeter deep socket to get this off. One thing that happened to us uh, just a moment ago and something that you'll need to absolutely double check for, there's a little black O-ring that sits inside of this and it stayed inside of that. So you have to pick it out and reinstall it in here before you put your temp sensor back on, otherwise you're gonna have a leak. Went ahead and put this lower radiator hose on but have not adjusted the clamp to it yet just in case we need to adjust it while it's in the car. We're also gonna leave the cardboard on here for as long as possible, but we did go ahead and take the cardboard off the back just so that you can kind of see a difference in the cores. So this is the PWR core versus the factory core. And you can kind of see a difference in the thickness here as well. The PWR is substantially thicker than the factory unit, uh, both in size here, but also in the end tanks at the top. Okay, one quick thing of note that we just ran into. This right here is not long enough to accept the factory bolt. I'm gonna have to find some washers probably on both sides here. I did not have any issues down with the uh, with the bottom ones. Started them by hand and then just used a 10 millimeter wrench to, to send them home. Uh, either way, coming along, but something important to note, you're probably gonna have to hunt through your, your used nuts and bolts bin and find yourself a couple of washers so that you don't end up bottoming out um, inside of here. Uh, not a big deal, but certainly unexpected. Another quick item of note while we're uh, getting back into this, make sure you remove the air box first hand. We found this out after the fact. This is a larger radiator, so it would not uh, the fan would not slide in there nicely with the air box in place. But now that with the air box removed, I can see how much easier it would have been to get to the lower bolts for the, uh, for the fan here. 
as well as the connectors for uh, the fan switch down there at the bottom. So do yourself a favor, go ahead and remove the air box uh, when you begin the process. Another thing that I noticed here, I don't think this is for a coolant temperature sensor, but uh, we made sure to check that this was tight as well as the drain bolt on the bottom. I'm assuming probably what they used this for was to put in some kind of inert gas so that the welds would uh, would would take inside and outside but there's really not enough height here to add any kind of coolant temperature sensor to the top of this tank so that's really the only thing that I can figure that it would be used for but we're going to go ahead and get back to finishing the assembly here getting it full of coolant and uh, and going on from there. I think we already mentioned that, but okay. uh, just in case we hadn't mentioned it already, you will need a washer for this bolt and for this bolt because the bolt is too long and it bottoms out inside of the uh, the welded portion that you're supposed to screw this onto. Didn't have any issues with that with the fans though, just on this uh, uh, the, on the top two condenser bolts here and here. All right, so we got everything back together uh, with the exception of the bumper. Probably easier to check for leaks, maybe, if the bumper's off. Either way, we'll probably put the bumper on as it's burping uh, new coolant into it. But everything's hooked back up. All the connectors are hooked back up. Uh, we didn't break any plastic clips. Those are all back where they're supposed to go, as well as the ones for the air box there. Uh, so everything's looking good to go uh, to go ahead and fill. But just to discuss what we're going to be filling with, I'm going with one bottle of water water, one gallon of distilled water and I'll fill the remainder with uh, Honda Genuine Coolant. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on that now. Okay, so we got everything finished, got it all buttoned up. We haven't gone on a test drive yet, so we're gonna do that now. Once we do that, we'll come back, check the coolant level. I'm expecting that it's gonna go down some because the thermostat hasn't opened yet because the lower hose is still cold, uh, but there's plenty enough in there that we're not risking any kind of engine damage and it's not gonna overheat or anything like that. So gonna go for a five to 10 minute test drive, um, probably without the heat running in this case, uh, so that it has a chance to warm up. Then we'll cut the heat back on just to make sure that we get any remaining bubbles out of the heater core. 
Uh, so thanks for watching, and uh, that's basically how you install the PWR uh, radiator.